All right, everybody, squash can be one of the hardest things that you can cut. I've got a ton of different knives and a ton of different squash. Today, we're gonna figure out what the best knife to cut a squash is. Hey, I'm Mike from Knifeware. As you can see, I collect a lot of knives and I like trying to figure out what the perfect knife for the job is. Today, we're doing knife versus squash in part of our knife battle series to figure out what knife does the single job the best. Stick around to the end because I got a top secret tip for you right at the end about how to make it really easy to cut a squash. All right, so first off, I've got a medium sized squash here. This is a Blue Hubbard. It's got a pretty thick skin, so that's gonna be a bit of a challenge to go through. And you know what? First off, let's try this knife. It's called a Nakiri. It's a vegetable knife. It's what it's designed for. This is a vegetable, this is a vegetable knife. Whatever, let's give it a shot. Now, something I, I will give you right off the bat, when you're cutting a squash and you're gonna cut the stem off, either the top or the, whatever this stem is called, on the bottom, sometimes it's like an iceberg, there's a hard bit that goes down below it. So I always try and cut it off with a bit of a margin so I don't run into it. Because it's so hard, I could chip my edge on it. So I'm gonna start here at the top. Oh, it's sticking already. Oh, that took a lot of force. It was kind of binding up as I was doing it there, but not too bad. See, I like cutting a flat spot, so it allows me to have a, when I'm trying to cut it in half, I'm not gonna be rocking around. So let me try the bottom here. No, I think I wanna try something with a bit more texture to the blade. Let's try this slicer here. This is long. See if maybe the long slide thin blade would work better. That's, that was a little better. Being able to get that sliding motion lets the edge do the work, so I'm not having to push it down. So I think I like the length of this guy here. Obviously, it depends on what you're doing with the squash. You can peel it. So let's try peeling. I think this would be good for peeling. Peel a section of it here. Just kind of like how you peel an orange where you, you go around. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. I, I'm finding that the polished surface is sort of sticking a bit. This is a Santogu. This is an all-purpose knife. Give this guy a go on the peeling factor. So we're trying to test out the peeling. We'll get into cutting it in half. Now this is pretty smooth, even though it's a kind of a polished blade. It's got a nice bevel here with a high point, so it seems to break up some of the, the tension. So this is a Zuyan. It's got a nice texture to it from the Damascus. It's powder stainless, it's SG2 steel. So this is a really amazing steel and a really amazing knife. Super cool handle, actually. It's kind of a, a a heptagon, is that what it's called, when it's seven sides? So I got this ridge right underneath my grip here. It feels awesome. It's a nice weight too. So let's see how this guy goes. Yeah, less, less friction. I mean, the, the squash is sliding around a bit, the water that's coming out of the bottom, but it's definitely smoother. It's got a bit more weight than the rest of them too, so, so that might be. You know what, let's go back to the Nakiri. I didn't do the peeling with the Nakiri, so if we're doing this a fair challenge here. Yeah, this is really, you know, I think it's because it's smooth and there's a lot of surface area here that it's creating more suction with that surface tension of the water. There's an explanation there, I think called science. I don't know that answer, but. We also have a big chef's knife here. This is a 240 millimeter Guto. This is a chef's knife. And I have always found in, in my experience that if you're doing a lot of work or you're cutting something really big, a big knife, helps. It's the mass, the length of the edge just seems to do the job right. Yeah, that's pretty good. As you can see, I've got the knife aimed down towards the cutting surface, but I'm pushing the knife forwards as I do. So it's giving me a, a bit of a slide so I can cross over uh, as much of the edge as possible. That's how you make a big knife do the job better. Yeah, that feels pretty good. This 240 Mabaroshi feels really great. I think the texturing I've got along the blade here is really helping, plus just the size and weight of the blade really helps to do the cutting versus having done with this Nakiri where I felt like I was really having to push and that's gonna lead me into a dangerous situation. Either I'm gonna damage the knife or I'm gonna damage myself. Neither of those two things I wanna do. Something I find when you get stuck into something dense like a squash, your, your tendency is to, to pry the knife and get it out. Sometimes that can be really dangerous, especially if your knife is ground to be a really thin knife. Often Japanese knives are, that's part of why they're so sharp, is that they're so thin. It's better to try and pull the knife out than it is to try and twist it. That can be a situation that'll lead you into chipping your edge of your knife. 
All right, so I think I've decided that so far for the job of peeling the squash, this 240 Fujiwara Maburoshi has got to be my favorite. It's got the size, the length, the weight, the dimpling on the blade breaks up some of the surface tension. So when I'm doing my peeling motion, which as I'm sliding the knife forwards, I'm following the radius of the, the squash here. I, I try to get it a little bit deeper so I, I'm getting some of that green off with it as well. And I'm not afraid to, to pull it back if I need to. And I'm just rolling the knife out. I've got my thumb on the back of the, the spine here and I just push my thumb out, which causes the blade to, to rotate. So as I push the knife through, I start to roll it forwards. I get to about the middle here and I feel like it's, it's getting stuck. And that part is when I wanna pull the knife back and start again and keep following that curve around. Now you often don't get right to the bottom. Something like a, a softer fruit is easier to do this with, but I find if I get to the bottom and I'm really twisting the knife, if I have too much force and I hit the cutting board, I can, I can roll the edge of the knife pretty easily. So I'm just gonna flip it over, make this a little bit flatter so it doesn't roll around and go back and clean that up. You might have a vegetable peeler like this, which is really nice for things like carrots because you only get a thin bit of the skin off. I find with this on a squash, it does an okay job. It, it leaves a little bit behind, so you've got all that green, which can be kind of bitter. And if you get really into it, sometimes it'll snag the peeler and will actually pop the blade out. So that's why I prefer to use a knife versus an actual peeler on a, something hard like a squash, especially as the skin gets harder. If you'd like, you can certainly use the peeler and go over and over. It'll just take you quite a long time to do it. So I went over to the knife wall and I've grabbed myself a Yusuba. This is a Japanese knife specifically for vegetables. This one's been around a long time. I really like this one. It's pretty thin. It's 165 millimeters. Uh, let's give it a go. Th these have a convex side on the back. It's, it's single bevel, so it, it's actually really good for curving, but uh, I We'll see how it goes. Wow, that's amazing. I have a lot of control with this. I don't feel like I'm pushing nearly as much and it's really following that curve nicely. All right, well, I think we have a new winner here. Yusuba wins when it comes to peeling my squash. We'll leave this guy out. We'll see how he does when we're trying to cut straight through it. I, I don't think he's gonna be so good on that stage. So. Uh, we're gonna try and cut this beast in half. A lot of times you go to cut something in half, you're gonna try to cut the whole thing in half, but what I see right now is there is a lot of squash for this knife to cut through like this, and, and I think I'll have less resistance if I cut half of it at one time. Of course, the inside of this is hollow, so what I can do is stab the knife in through the middle a little ways. I'm not gonna try and run it down to the ground. So I've got a lot, of, uh, a lot less resistance. I'm just cutting through the wall of one side. Now I can back it out, turn it around, and do the other side. There we go, a lot more control. That was a lot easier. So you probably noticed it wasn't the easiest thing to just cut through that squash. So when you're doing this and you're pushing on something, you do need to take your time and be careful. Don't rush, be focused. If you're pushing too hard, back the knife out, start again, you'll get there. You just have to take your time. So now I've got two halves, two flat sides. It's not gonna roll around. If you're trying to cut the round thing, it's gonna make it even harder because you'll be pushing and it'll be rolling and it, it'll be treacherous. I'm gonna cut it into quarters and I've switched up my knife. So this is the, yeah, little wiggle gets her through there. This is that 210 Zuyin again. You can see this, this squash is actually pretty packed in the middle here, really dense with seeds, but still not as dense as cutting through two sides of this, this squash at one time. This thing's really fresh, so it's really quite hard. I'm gonna try this Santoku again. So maybe I'll cut it again, and I guess we're getting into not necessarily how you wanna cut this squash, so leave me alone in the comments. You've probably got a better way of going about it, but we're testing out knives here. So we're gonna cut right through the middle here of this quarter of a squash. That Masashi just slid right through. You can see I had a bit of a push to do it there. So just quickly scoop the seeds out here. That'll make it a lot easier not trying to cut through those seeds. And there we go. So now I've got it into a really manageable size piece here. And I can go through and cut pieces. You could hear that almost. Hey, I hit the board and the knife edge rolled a bit. That's a super thin edge. Let's see what else we got. Still pretty sticky on this guy. 
Yeah, I really, I like the nakiri for so many vegetables, but I think I like the length of something bigger. Now, the slicer is not too bad, it's got some length. I start back further, and I'm just sliding the knife forwards, basically meeting no resistance, just a tiny little bit. I'm hardly pushing, yeah, skid a little bit there. That's when that surface tension kicks in. All right, Maestro, could you pass me a 240 Mavaroshi? I think that's really gonna be the way I get. Again, we're gonna cut this down in a quarter here. Oof, that was pretty smooth. Just doing that sliding motion. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. Okay, I'll give this quick dice here. Mavaroshi's pretty good, it's up there. That slicer was pretty nice. Let's try this Yusuba again. You know, I've always found cutting through the center of something really dense that this knife, because it's an uneven shape, it's not beveled equally on both sides. I find that this has a tendency to curl, which is part of what makes it good for, for uh, peeling. Well, it's super thin, so I'm being very careful to not whack this too hard into the cutting board. I think if I wanted to make really thin slices, this would be great but I'm still finding going through the middle of something heavy, it's not, it's not great. It's kind of stopping on me here. I think if I held it up and went through, yeah, you can see, instead of cutting straight down, the knife just curls over to the left. That's part of the reason, part of its design, part of how it works. Uh, let's go back here, 240, pretty good. Long slicer, Ooh, better. 210 Gyuto, well, 210 Kiritsuki tip. Oh, you see, this is really smooth. And, and you know what? Wow, that's okay. We got a winner right now. This is amazing. It's that fine texture that's produced by the layers of steel on the outside. They've etched the steel so it's created some, some texture. And that's breaking up all the surface tension. So my knife is really easily drifting through without getting the breaks. You can see as I'm cutting, it's not jamming and stopping on me abruptly. Yeah, this Nakiri definitely bites in, but it seems to be much better on the smaller pieces. But when I'm trying to cut those bigger pieces, this was really binding up on me. It wasn't great in the peeling phase either. So I don't know if the Nakiri is the best one for the all purpose. If you're just taking it and chopping it up, then then could be a good choice. So this little Santoku, I just like the way it's ground. I, I, I like to feel a knife by pulling my fingers up from the edge towards the spine to feel how it's been beveled. There's a bit of a high ridge here. It's the same length as that Nakiri, but I think maybe just with the way it's been ground, it's going to slide through a little bit better than the Nakiri. Oh yeah, okay, that was pretty good. Let's try it here again. Oh, not too bad, not too bad. You see, as you get down to that smaller piece, it's a little bit easier to use. So let's do a little dice with this Santoku. This is pretty magic actually. Nice and smooth. Not a lot of breaking from the uh, surface tension, but I think it's because I'm not trying to split apart such a hard, big piece like when it's whole. All right, so let's, uh, let's sum it up here. We've got this big squash. We broke it down into some pieces. First, uh, cut the top and the bottom off, and then we did a peeling. And I, I think honestly, the winner from the peeling would have to be this Yusuba. Single bevel vegetable knife that really went around the curves nicely. I felt very little resistance, nothing was sticking, nothing was binding. It was actually surprising to me how nice this was for, for peeling a squash. I have to say that because I've never tried using a Yusuba to peel a squash. I always use it for different, more specific vegetable jobs like Japanese knife techniques. But the Nakiri and the Santoku didn't quite have enough weight or enough edge length to be able to back the knife up and keep curling as I was trying to peel the squash. So I wouldn't say those were my favorite. The length on the Tsujihiki was nice, but I didn't feel like I had the right amount of mass with it. I'm gonna say that if I was gonna choose one, this would probably have been a great uh, regular knife to use for, uh, for peeling the squash. Now, when it got into cutting it into quarters and eighths, so I had a more manageable piece to dice, uh, the Yusuba was definitely not a good choice. It was too tempted to twist and turn uh, because of its single bevel. Uh, it doesn't track straight through that dense food. The length of the Tsujihiki here was nice. Again, I kind of wanted a bit more mass. It was binding up. Same like the Santoku and the Nakiri. 
So either this 210 or this 240, both of which have some nice texturing on the face of the blade here, that really allowed them to drift through without breaking too much. Now, of course, as you cut through, it binds up, you back up, push again, trying to use the length of the knife by sliding it through the food. That's really what you need. But paired with a knife, you wanna slide it back and forth, and you want it longer, get a longer knife. This, this 240, again, really did that job really nicely. When I had it broken down into the smaller pieces and I was ready to dice it, uh, they all did work quite well. The long slicer slid through with the least resistance of them all. Uh, but I was really comfortable using this Santoku as I was chopping through. It's just a really nice manageable size to get them down into smaller dices. You're not having to deal with such a big knife in your hand. Uh, keeping your work surface smaller is a little easier too. I've got to have to say though that when I went back to dicing it and I used this 240 Maburoshi, you know, I had such a nice feel in my hand. This knife feels great. This finger notch here allows you to tuck your hand right up on top of the blade. So you're right on top of the balance point. It's a super comfortable knife to hold and I felt really confident when I was pushing on it. All the way from peeling, quartering it, cutting it into eighths, chopping it up and dicing it. This knife really did the job with ease, each one of those steps. All right, so I think this 240 Maburoshi is really my favorite. If it's not your style, you're not looking for a Fujiwara, you prefer a Japanese handle, no problem. I think overall, if you're looking for a knife to cut up a squash, aim in that 210 or 240 millimeter size range, so that's the length of the, of the edge, and try to find something that's got some texture on the face of the blade. That'll help the food release off of it and help your knife glide through a little bit more smoothly. So 210, 240 millimeters, either Gyuto, Kiritsuki could be good too, and uh, either style of handle worked for me. So I think bigger is better in this situation, yeah. My secret, top secret tip to making cutting squash easier is one simple little trick. Pop that sucker in the microwave. If you put a squash in a microwave for maybe a minute, it'll heat it up and it will make the meat of the squash just a little bit softer and it'll make any knife easier to glide through. I do find that it's good to knock off the woody part on the top because it'll actually start to burn. Once the flesh inside is warmed up, it moves around the knife a little easier and it doesn't seem to bind up as easily. So depending on where you are and what you've got, you might not have your 240 Maburoshi with you and you might need to cut a squash and all you've got is a microwave. Uh, give it a quick nuke and uh, it should be easier for you. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. That was the knife battle squash edition. Trying to figure out what's the best knife to cut a squash with. If uh, you want to know any more information about the specific knives I was using, you'll find links to them down below in the description. And you could watch this video about covering pumpkins next.